Hey everybody, the first significant Warno patch has dropped yesterday. But not just that, they also announced what is in the works for the patch after that. But, since this is actually a not insignificant patch, I thought I'm gonna cover it. First of all, tell you, you know, what's in it in case you didn't know. You were like, oh, there's an update, but I don't know what's in it. There you go. And of course, the fact, you know, that they hinted at what is coming. Which, you know, not everyone might know. So first of all, in case you're not following very closely, at the, for this patch, no new content. All right? It's a disappointing for me too, but no new content. However, they are saying they're preparing to add two new divisions and the first 10 versus 10 map. So hopefully the next or the update after that. So what is actually in this patch though? A lot of technical stuff, a lot of mechanical stuff, so I'm already gonna jump into the game. Because the first thing is the corrected short movement stance in rules of engagement. Which is actually quite important, this thing here. But I can already tell you it's not been fully fixed yet, unfortunately. But it is better. So, what did this do? I think I can very easily show you what this did beforehand by just changing the rules of engagement. On the move order, for me, I have it by default just move. Oh no, that's the wrong one here. Short or fast, right? Before, like until recently, and if you've seen my videos, you know how it works. Exactly. This looked kind not exactly like this, but similar. The tanks would try to avoid driving through forests. Not, they wouldn't like fast move on the road, but essentially that's what it was. And it's they still sometimes do that a bit, right? But for the most part, it's been re it's been fixed, right? So they really do take that direct line now. For the most part, sometimes at least for infantry, they tend to avoid stuff, like still do like the old the good old I'm gonna drive around. Yeah, you can't usually get it uh, around buildings, but mostly fixed. And that was a really really annoying stuff, and made it juking in and out of forests, you know, to get in and out of line of sight really annoying so that was a very very important fix that you'll have to see so if has a nice fixed tactical group with transport I am very sure that refers to like these tactical groups here I don't know what the bug was because I didn't use tactical groups that much um, outside for like hot king ASFs and stuff or some artillery German text whatever MiG 23P got changed let's just take a look at that so uh, beforehand it actually had, the MiG-23 actually had the wrong layout for being a MiG-23. I think it was, yeah, beforehand it was MiG-23P, now it's changed to MLA, it should be MLD, but had the wrong missile loadout for the plane that it actually was, this thing here. So I guess that's fine, it's just a name change. Now, these are some very interesting things. If I'm correct, this mainly this only includes the Tunguska, but I think the pivots might have also been buffed. Uncertain. Uh, but essentially, the Tunguska rate of fire and accuracy buffed. We'll come that, to that in just a second, but while we're here, increased range of anti aircraft ground weapons against planes. I don't, I'm pretty sure range against helicopters has not been affected by the Strela. I'm not sure if it had the same range before. But the AKM has now more range versus planes. It had like 3,100 before, I believe. The Coop, which used to be the Book M1, which in turn used to be the Coop before that already. Though I'm not sure if that was only the closed version or not. Now it's 4,000 meter range, which is, which is great. Um, the Chaparral. Now it's the same range versus planes as against helicopters. So does the Pivots. Stingers should be unchanged, though Stinger C still has 3 RPM. Unit stats have in this patch barely be has been have been barely changed. And this is something that you really have to keep in mind. It is unfortunate, there's some stuff coming, but it seems like they were really focused mostly on like technical stuff and fixing move commands, etc. etc. I admit I hope for more, but you know, it's not like as as, as nice as it would be. Being annoyed by it doesn't really make it uh, faster anyway. Yeah, but how much did that actually do things? And it is 
sorry for that, really a mixed bag. I did some very, very quick tests. I'm gonna show you the replay here with balanced. It's it's not a very extensive test because we didn't have a lot of time. But we did test both the Pivot and the Tunguska for, against a few units. And the TLDR is essentially, they are pretty good against planes until you go up against two armor on the SQ-25 or the A-10. Because the Tunguska's gun, it just refused to fire against the two armor, two front and two rear armor of the A-10. It only, it only fired at the side armor. Um, the other issue is against very fast planes like the Sea Eagle or the MiG-31, which you'll see in a second, they have very, very hard time to actually line up the gun or aim in time. I'm unsure if it has to do with turning the turret or aiming, but in, in general, you'll see that they'll barely fire. Slow this down a bit. And it also, the special effects look really weird. It's really hard to see that it's actually firing. That's, oh yeah, that's a missile first, because the missile actually has more range. Also, it can fire a gun and missile at the same time, which I'm not sure if it's intended. But now it's gonna fire the gun, I think. It's very hard to actually see anything. It's just very few special effects. It's not a big deal, but still. Um, yeah, and it didn't do much, but it also didn't fire a whole lot. Hard to see because there's a supply truck nearby. 3 damage. It's not too bad given how fast it is, how high it flies and how long it had to aim. For how short it fired, it felt fine. Right, you saw even at one speed how long it actually took to aim. So it has a really bad, uh, low chance to shoot at fast planes like the Sea Eagle, but I think that's fine. Yeah, speed is a lot more diverse on planes like, oh, that's, that was the... Hard to see which Tunguska is firing. No, it was still just one Tunguska. But yeah, if, if they get in range and the plane has zero armor, they actually deal a good amount of damage. But I think that's partially also the fact that planes with zero armor take double damage from AP, and I'm pretty sure pretty sure this fires with AP rounds. So it technically deals at the direct at two points of damage, I think. Which is weird because then how did it... It's very weird, I'm unsure, because we don't have an armory tool, so it's hard to really say how the mechanics behind it work. But... It seems as far that again, no armor, pivots, etc. don't seem too bad. But once again here, the plane is really, really fast. So the Tunguska and the pivots has to aim for really long. But it, it dealt a good amount of damage. Oh, no, these other Tunguskas were also firing pivots. Oh, they can fire on the move? I didn't even know that. That's actually a big deal. I mean, they were all firing, but still, it's very, very fast. Now let's take a look at the Thunderbolt. Right, Thunderbolt. Tunguska, it's, it's on attack move, right? Now it's aligning. Now it's firing. And now it's stopped firing. And trust me, it is still in range. But because the A10 has two rear armor, and the Tunguska has only one AP, it won't fire. Right? Because unlike... It really seems like... That... Um, because in Wargame, what you have to keep in mind, right? In Wargame... AA, even AA that had AP rounds, like the automatic or the LVKV, the, they had only AP range versus ground targets. They had technically, like every, basically every gun that has AP and AG, like tank guns, etc., they were actually divided into two different weapons. The gun that had range versus aerial units had only had HE only, right? If the automatic was firing with its AP round versus planes, it would one-shot every plane unless it hits the two armor parts on the SC-25s or A-10s. Otherwise, it would have literally one-shot every plane, right? But I, it seems that this isn't the case with uh, specs in this game, that the AP, clearly, I mean, it's kind of obvious because it refused to fire the A-10, uh, is used against aerial units as well, which is a mistake. I think from a gameplay perspective, because it's just annoying and frustrating, and it it is just weird. But that is that is not all just yet. I have the feeling, though. Again, I can't prove that or anything, but you'll see in a second. 
that maybe it's only versus planes? Because despite, like, don't forget this is 20% ECM. But as you'll see in a second against an Apache or the pivots against the hind, they struggle a lot. Whereas against planes, you saw, like, once it, once the Tungus got fired, right? It dealt a lot of damage. And you'll see it with the SC24M here as well against the single pivots. And don't forget, look how long it's aiming. Now it's firing. That 24M got a lot of damage. 20% ECM compared to Wargame, the pivots here did quite a lot against a single plane. Or at, the, at worst, similar amount, right? So against zero armor planes, again, this might be because they have zero armor, so they take double damage, possibly. Presumably. Um... They deal a good amount of damage. However, let's take a look at helicopters. Helicopters have one armor. And it really at least feels like they shoot with HE rounds against them. Because HE currently takes reduced damage damage against... Uh, sorry. One armor takes reduced damage from incoming HE weaponry. Unlike in Wargame where it was just 1 to 1. Because look at, look, first look at this hind. I have the weapons turned off. Just because I want to see the full damage. First of all, they get spotted relatively late, but three in three damage early on, but then nothing, just nothing. Not now, finally, we're getting damage because presumably again because of range scaling. Maybe range scaling just works different against planes as well, but it is weird. And you'll see with this Tunguska as well, it's gonna spot these Apaches very very late, right? I can already tell you it was only two thousand meters, and sure, I sorry, wrong side. I had no. Let's actually, let's actually check when he spots me. What are your optics? Normal. It shouldn't be because of the buildings, or like the, it might might have been because of the forest, but I don't think it was. Maybe it was because of the forest, admittedly. But like. Just nothing, literally nothing. Now when I get close, the range scaling really seems to kick in. But even even that salvo in and then suddenly from 3 to 0 within like a split second. It is just so inconsistent. Okay, let's not say inconsistent. It is inconsistent, but more often than not it's just bad. Right? It's still kind of consistently garbage until you get into low range. And then it's just weird. Oh, it, oh the, the pivot doesn't even have brain. Oh no, it does have. It's just, it's not not necessarily just the issue of like not killing it, but it just it didn't even stun it before it killed it. I think that's not a big issue. If if the Apaches at least or like helicopters at least got stunned quickly, might have been okay. And here you can see by the way it's gonna fire both guns at the same time, which is which it can't do in war game. Now, I managed to route it because the. It's, uh, this has like 280 suppression damage, so it deals a lot of suppression. Now I can't check HP, so yeah, kill it. It is... I'm not happy with how specs perform here. Alright, what do we have? Correction of ACAF turrets? I believe it has to do with the fact that... Uh, once again, I'm sorry. How the ACAF has uh, so many weapons and probably either for some reason couldn't fire multiple at the same time or something like that. That's whatever, it's... I'm not sure what was that, if that's a model thing or not. Oh no, they also got increased penetration like the A10, I believe. Um, and you know, Conquest ticks at half the speed. Um, you might have noticed that games tended to end fairly quickly based on score. Should be... should take twice as long. Tanks got it. Tanks we got adjusted. So I'm not sure how how differently they really feel. I mean, obviously they used to have road speed 100 something, but I think it was mainly road speed that got adjusted. TAD had like 100 or something kmh there, I believe. So I'm I'm happy that they seem to either only or mainly touch road speed because I think relatively fast off road speed is important for tanks to feel 
just mobile and fun, right? If they're slow, and that's one thing I just didn't like in Seal Division, where tanks, especially off-road, felt just so sluggish. It just didn't feel fun to me. Plus, of course, you know, they are modern, somewhat modern MPDs, they have good stabilizers, so you want to also sometimes make use of that, of course. Infantry speed reduction. Nice typo. Yeah, still unsure how much it really was, so I can't really tell you how impactful this feels. I'm not sure if I like it. I like if infantry is mobile, but it might have actually been a bit too fast. Maximum cohesion. If the, like if a unit is at high cohesion, the speed bonus it gets is reduced. Units now spawn at a 10 second interval. At the moment, though, it's every single unit is has a 10 second timer in between them by the looks of it. I'm not, you know what, let's just test it out. Um, I don't know if it's only... Oh my god. If it's only from the same tab. Because if you buy, let's say, three infantry squad, right, they all have 10 seconds in between. Whereas in Wargame, of course, you could sort of circumvent that by buying them in the stack. It doesn't work here. Alright, let's, let's cap this. Let's buy four of these Sapari. Or Sapari. Then we have one, two, right? You get the point. I'm wondering what happens if I buy this and then this and then this and then this. If they have a separate timer for each tab or not? If Nope, they don't seem to. Okay, that's good to know. I was wondering what if I do this, and this is closed, or if it only happens if I... I'm, I'm unsure about the bug that was reported, if it was only if you buy them in stacks. Yeah, okay, it's only for the same tab, alright, good to know. A10 has a nose gun. A10, of course, also absolutely deletes planes now. Also, most certainly because it uses its AP gun versus planes. And with 6 AP and planes basically having no, literally having no armor, they presumably take twice the damage or almost or something like that. Just one or two bursts and it absolutely kills any plane. Not fun. This is got update, whatever AP gain fixed, so tanks gain AP now, like based on, you know, shorting the distance more quickly. More, it's basically just like Wargame. At the moment, not a huge deal because we only really have pretty expensive and heavy tanks in the game will be more noticeable once we get cheaper tanks as well which we don't have at the moment obviously it's i think a model fix i think that has to do oh yeah that has to do with the game accidentally giving you a draw even though it wasn't really a draw it was clearly a victory a damage control to he the order panel on the bottom right you might have seen right the thing where it, with the orders got increased and buttons got rearranged. I think I think that's why I got I got caught out earlier when I played a bit. I was like, I just can't seem to find the cell button, but that probably was why. Red gun gun, blah 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 blah. Alright. All fun good. Most basically mostly good changes, although of course with the AT gun some new issues introduced. But overall good changes. It seems like the It was mainly I think a technical change so I think soon ish we'll hopefully see more content and more balance changes once they got you know stuff like this all f like you know mechanics and stuff fixed there's still some bugs in game that are annoying but I think it really seems like they're ironing these out finally <laughs> and uh, gonna get to working more on content although I guess no it's not like an an, an artist is really busy fixing mechanical stuff, I guess. It's not like you can use all your manpower for like one thing, right? It depends on what it is. Anyway, let's not get into that. So let's just quickly check on what's up for the next patch. Fix on hunt order. I think it's AA just, or like especially man pets, sometimes just seem to not really use the hunt order. I think that's something what they mean, where the units don't actually stop and shoot when they could. I mean, I hope that this also includes the quick hunt, which I've shown recently or, or mentioned recently that is really annoying. Readability of unit, a number of units available in the deck. It's deck building stuff. M67 gun rate of fire. That is, I know you can, can't see the left part of the thing at the moment. 
this thing here. Recoil's rifle with 20 RPM, especially on Elite, this is like 30, close to 30, not good. Very, very good. Uh, Strella will be able to fire on the move and fire and forget, which it currently can't, right? This is stationary and this means guided. Slight improvement to end game screen, whatever. Better configuration, in game message, whatever. Improved readability of aircraft thumbnails. It's probably for in game for the air wing to more easily see if something is ready or repairing or something. Cluster ML cluster is gonna get buffed. Not sure if aircraft really need the cluster buff, but we'll see. HE splash, but that's good because HE bombers are pretty bad, honestly. Although I did kill a CV in, in yesterday's video. Other stuff, hand order on building fixed. Um, in case you don't know, if you tell an infantry squad to enter a building, they're actually automatically given a hand order, no matter what you do. So if there's something in range, they will just refuse to enter the building until they can't really shoot at anything in range anymore. Which is really annoying. Unit label trenches. Can't wait for this. Displaying hiding text on tactical cursors. That is for the smart cursor, right? When you have a unit selected and tell them to shoot at something, you have this pop-up that says, you know, chance to hit, what's the chance to win, yada yada yada. I'm pretty sure that's what I mean. Take overview and decoration changes, so... We'll see how that and resupply this in combat. Yeah, that's when units are fighting. You can actually resupply them and you can have infantry fight. And as they lose models, you can just continue repairing them during the fight. So they lose and gain and lose and gain. It's actually kind of funny, but also broken as fuck. But yeah, those are the changes. Um, reasonable patch. On the one hand, hope for more. On the other hand, the game is not even out one week in early access. So, yeah. Hopefully, still new content comes soon. Even like two new divisions are just adding so much. They're, two new divisions don't just really double. They do just. It's not just they double the double the content, ignoring maps right now because suddenly you have right now you have three matchups, right? Soviets versus Third Armored and the two mirror matches, right? With two new divisions. You have suddenly four mirror matches, assuming one versus one for now, right? Four mirror matches, and then you have third armor that can go against go up against three others. That's three plus two plus one, right? It's suddenly ten matchups from three to ten matchups by doubling the divisions, right? So two new divisions add more than just you know double the matchups or two more matchups. So it's gonna make the game a lot better, and of course, just fixes like. Hopefully, AA is gonna be stronger versus helicopters. Helicopters are more expensive, well, namely the Apache, really. It's just broken. Or stuff like Stickers having three rounds per minute. Yada, yada, yada. Let's see. In any case, hope you enjoyed the mini update, which also took more than 20 minutes. Not planned, but oh well. And I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye bye.